Welcome to yet another fabulous Sunday night news and nonsense. And of course, this week we are fishing with dynamite. I mean, we got Fishman Loves Linux. How you doing, Fishman? Groovy. Uh, so tell me, um, how much fish can you uh, catch with depth charges? More than I can count, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, well, a lot of them sink to the bottom, though, and it ruins all the coral waste and everything. Not a very nice thing, so please, 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 Fish, don't get caught doing that. Toss, what you up to, buddy? Well, it's been a very cold, bitter week, oh, and I'm that's sorry. our show tonight. Thanks for joining in. Spatch <laughs> not feeling good. Goodbye. <laughs> and while you're freezing uh, freezing your tail off, it was a hot day down here in Florida. Went oh, to a nice picnic out in the sun, outdoor karaoke oh, and everything. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, barbecue, all that stuff. Yep, it was hot wearing my shorts outside today, uh, even sweating in the hot sun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Toss, I got to ask you a question. Remember, remember when Linus Terval said, "If Microsoft ever does applications for Linux, it means I've won." Okay. Well, guess what? Ubuntu, Hortonworks, and Microsoft equals big data hosted solution, and this is coming directly from the Canonical website. And I've actually found out about this on the Cup of Linux forum. Somebody posted about this, and uh, let me tell you about it. The first. Microsoft Azure hosted service to run Linux on, you know, to run Linux on Ubuntu announced at a Strata conference. And apparently uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, it's called HD Insight on Ubuntu. And I guess this is like a cloud technology thing uh, that they have going on. And uh, the, the graphic shows Ubuntu Hortonworks, which I have no clue, and Microsoft. So it looks like Microsoft is finally starting to play nicely uh, with Linux. Um, and we've discussed this before, though, that they've had, uh, you know, the, they've been doing things with the cloud solutions and that sort of thing. But now actually making something official like this, um, you know, I guess this is microwaves, you know, Microsoft's way of saying, hey, you know, it, you know, Linux is now in the mainstream and they're ready willing and able to work with linux how cool is that i think it's great look we all know that at certain points in history they can make a terrific product uh, you know now you know i i thought windows 7 was perfectly you know acceptable if, if for someone who was an exclusive linux user and wanted to try windows it's perfectly fine you know windows vista of course it wasn't but there seems to be a fundamental change with microsoft because if what I've been reading is 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 correct, uh, uh, Spatry, you know, Windows 10 I've been testing, it works great, and it's supposed to be free, a free upgrade for the first year for people who currently have Windows 8 or 8.1. So there are changes, changes blowing in the wind. Imagine that Microsoft and Linux are dating and maybe getting married. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> uh, I don't think they'd make very good bedfellows, and I I'll just bet. <laughs> Shut up, fish. And I'll just bet. <laughs> I'll just bet. Steve Ballmer, he's just chewing his hat because you remember, you know, oh, Linux is a cancer and all this and all that and all oh, this. Yeah. And, yeah, he's driving Microsoft into the ground. Uh, and then Bill Gates gets Sadea Nadella or yeah, whatever yeah, his yeah. name is. Uh, yeah, whatever his name is. At least you they're know? being civil and talking talking it over over dinner how does that sound yes fresh minds bringing fresh ideas and maybe yeah well, yeah yeah it's well maybe great. Linux is just it's... getting more and more popular yeah all right who's next you got something fish yes i do out of the world of google google boss warns a forgotten century with email and photos at risk piles of dis digitized material from blogs, tweets, pictures, and videos to official documents such as court rulings and emails may be lost forever because the programs needed to view them will become defunct, Google's vice president has warned. Humanity's first steps into the digital world could be lost to future historians. Vince Cerf told the American Association for the Advancement of Science annual meeting in Jose, San Jose, California, warning that we faced a forgotten generation or even a forgotten century through what he called bit rot where old computer files become useless junk now isn't that something big big flaw in the system already yeah now you would think that they would come up with a way that they could you know uh save 
you know, that old data so that, you know, um, because, I mean, archive data is very useful, even for college students and stuff. You remember those old microfiche things, Toss? Yes, yes. Yeah, you know, maybe they could... <laughs> But but the thing is, I mean, we don't even need microfish now. I mean, because you can store zillions well, of documents uh, on a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on a on a on a microchip and that sort of things. But you'd think they'd come up with some kind of way to, you know, um, to uh, you know save, uh, especially if they're important, you know. But then again, you know, um, it's Google, so <laughs> they're busy. They're, they're too busy flying balloons in the air, giving everybody. Da, da, da. <laughs> what you got, Toss? Uh, a little bit of uh, for all the uh, people who play Halo, ha Halo gamers. There's a new novel coming out. I believe it's only an ebook. Somewhat unusual. It's called Halo: New Blood, an ebook. I believe this is uh, the story is set to give you a hint of what's coming up in Halo Five. My 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 son and I played Halo Five, the beta multiplayer. It's great. Look. I know the time, effort involved to make any game for any platform, whether it's Windows, Xbox, PlayStation, or Linux. And that being said, I would like to give a, a shout out to all the people out there working on the next Halo game. They all look good. I'm hoping one day we'll have somewhat of a Linux equivalent uh, someday. Yeah, but, yeah, I'm, I'm be cool. so, yeah, because I want a Linux port. Otherwise, uh, let's move on to something else. <laughs> well, hey, now that we're talking about a Microsoft, <laughs> Microsoft and Linux, we're talking over dinner. There might be a port for that Halo game. You, you never know. Hey, Gabe Newell might might uh, might push that down the line. You never know. Uh, okay, well, let's see what else I got now. According to Sean M. Davis's blog, and this is good news for a lot of people if this is true. Uh, and this this document just came out. I, uh, I assume he's one of the developers for XFCE. XFCE 4.12 could very well possibly be one week away. After what seems like an eternity, a new release of XFCE is finally just around the corner. XFCE 4.10 was released in 2012. And since then, development has happened in small bursts for each project. Once a release date was set, interest spiked and development along with it. The continued development has been recorded by Taws on the XFCE forums and uh, Scunny K in his blog. Uh, both are worth a look at to see how far XFCE has come in recent months. As a Manjaro user, I can tell you it's come a long way. Uh, it's a lot of great innovations have come to the table and that sort of thing. And with uh, just one week until the determined release date, uh, February 28th, String Freeze is behind us, and all that remains is bug fixes. So good stuff indeed. Great news for people running XFCE. I hope they are able to make that. That would be some cool stuff. And, of course, we'd be seeing that coming to the Minjaro desktop very soon. What you got, Fish? Well, I got a little bit of an editorial here off of uh, – the LX or Linux news, and it says that Linux gaming will be fine even without Steam Machine succeeding. I decided to write down some thoughts, according to Liam Daw, on Steam Machines and Linux gaming in general, as I've seen quite a few articles on other publications about the imminent demise of Steam Machines and Linux gaming that are rammed full of annoyances from writers who seem to want it to fail. Well, from what I've seen already, they they don't have to worry about anything. I've seen tons of new games come out. So, you know, about the Steam machines, okay, Linux gaming is still gaining much steam, uh, as I've seen it roll off of the assembly lines here and there. Of course, uh, look at Star Conflict and Zero AD. I mean, those are two really big games right now that people are really playing hard as a scene not in our community but in other communities as well yeah um and it's interesting to see because uh, i've been on steam i've been looking around some different games and I'm still i'm still deciding on whether or not i want to get the latest civilization 5 um one of them had kind of mixed reviews and that sort of thing but it's great to see triple a titles coming and then of course there's gog.com and actually you know, I like a lot of the older games, and so it's interesting to see that they have Linux ports for some of the old favorites, and a lot of those were AAA games back in the day as well. So it's really good news. Um, it's improving. 
Um, so even if the uh, SteamOS doesn't pick up, they've already made a market for it. People are buying games. So um, full steam ahead, I say. What do you think, Toss? Yeah, one of my predictions uh, this year, besides I, I, I believe Windows 10 will be a terrific seller, that I believe Linux Gaming will take a major leap forward uh, this year. Uh, I, I hope probably sometime towards uh, the summer, maybe by this Christmas coming up. It really needs to, because I think part of the future in Linux lies in gaming. And I would love to see, as we just talked about briefly about Halo, I would love to see more choices for game quality games on the Linux platform. So I'm, I am all for it. All right. What you got, Toss? Have you heard about the upcoming Linux clock apocalypse? Uh-oh. Here it comes. Go ahead. Tell us. Well, well uh, uh, this is, I guess, uh, I just picked this up today. <laughs> this is similar, I guess, to the uh, to the Y two K bug, uh, you know, back in two thousand with the clocks. Oh, okay. Is uh, Tux going to blow up on us or something? Uh, well, it may happen. Uh, you have time, although uh, this will happen on January. This will happen exactly three fourteen GMT time on January nineteenth, twenty thirty eight. Uh, yeah, 2038. But apparently there is a, a bug, a deficiency in the way computers record time, uh, similar to the Y2K bug. The problem lies in, and I'm reading this off the web, that, that comes down to the time underscore T time codes used by Linux and, uh, and other Unix compatible OSs. Isn't Mac like Unix? So this might affect too. Uh, something because they were specified as 32-bit values back in the early days of Unix. Uh, anyway, uh, I know this is some time away, but this needs to be addressed because if we let it go, well, like you said, at some point, Tux may blow up and that's the end of Linux. Well, um, let me ask you, you said that's going to happen in 2038, right? Yes. Um, by that time, I'll have one foot in the grave and another on the banana peel. If I'm lucky, okay, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm even lucky enough to live that long. Okay. And speaking of time, it's time to cue toss today's favorite song, NSA. NSA. Oh, everybody loves the NSA. Come oh, on, you knew I was going to have some. You knew I was going to have some more NSA news, and this uh, was dated February nineteenth uh, from The Verge. The NSA and its allies stole the keys to your smartphone security. That's right. If what? you have one of those those SIM chips, yeah. A, uh, a new report by The Intercept details a stunning heist made by U.S. and U.K. spies that has given intelligence agencies the ability to break through the privacy of smartphone communications. The report claims that the NSA and GCHQ, who they are, I have no idea, uh, successfully hacked the network of Jamalto, a major manufacturer of SIM cards, and obtained the secret keys that unlock phone data. In short, it's a massive security breach that means your phone could be vulnerable to the whims of the world's most powerful spy agencies. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, hang on, I just got a message on my phone from the NSA. Uh, the FBI is going to be knocking at your door. <laughs> Goodbye. There you go. Fishman, your turn. Okay, well, we got elementary OS. Why we make you type zero dollars before you download. Open source software can always be acquired oh, without you. charge. Hey. Now, spatula, straighten up there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but can still incur significant development costs. Elementary OS wants to make people aware of this and have changed their website to suggest donating when downloading and make users explicitly enter zero dollars if they want a free download. This is the same strategy Canonical has used when offering Ubuntu. The elementary OS blog explains, developing software has a huge cost. Some companies offset that cost by charging hundreds of dollars for their software, making manufacturers pay them to license the software or selling expensive hardware with the OS included. Now, with that in mind, there was a uh, backup because on their website before they changed it, they actually said that you would be cheating others if you didn't donate to download their ISO. So with that in mind, 
think about it. They want you to pay. Of course it costs money to make this stuff. But why make somebody type in zero dollars? Is it to humiliate them or to goad somebody into offering a donation? Okay. Um, we actually had this discussion uh, last week on the Cup of Linux forum, and uh, it, it did bring up some controversy, and it did stir some people up as well. And I think the correct term that they used was if you were downloading uh, elementary OS without paying for it and using it on multiple systems, you were cheating the system, per se. Now, they did back up on that. They did they did remove that phrase because, yes, uh that, that could be taken as harmful, but here is my, here's my take on this. Elementary has been well known to bring a lot of neat features to the table. At least they did in Elementary OS Jupiter. They had some awesome features they brought to the table in Gnome Shell. Now they're working on Pantheon and they're doing different things. Uh, I haven't looked at any of the things they've been doing as of late. But they, but they have been bringing some interesting features and a lot of these are made in house. There is nothing wrong with asking for a donation. Um, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with having a paid support model. And if this is something that they would, that they really, you know, they really depend on, you know, depend on, um, you know, support coming in for it, maybe they should make it a paid support model. And then, you know, you know, request, because I know Zorin does it. They have, you know, they have a free edition and then they have the ultimate edition that has all the really cool features and you pay, I think, like 10 or 15 bucks for it, which is very reasonable. And it pays the kids college uh, tuition and that sort of thing because it's some, it's some, you know, Artin Zorin is paying his way through college with it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you want to, you know, um, if you want to, you know, have a paid support model or uh, asking for support, I, I can tell you cupoflinux.com wouldn't even be running if it wasn't for the support that we get uh, through uh, donations and that sort of thing. But we don't cram people's nose in it either. We don't force people. You know, we don't have a pay gate that just pops up and, you know, says something uh, to the user because, uh, you know, we, we feel that if people find it useful, they, you know, they will contribute what they what they can towards it. And, um you know, so asking for a donation is is not wrong, but you know there you know there are ways that people you know and this of course forcing people to type the zero dollar amount can be taken the wrong way by many people. It's not my position to say whether their approach is right or wrong. Uh, I know a lot of people dislike it, and um, I know people are going to complain about it. So, uh, how do you see that, Toss? I, I'll be quite honest, after what I saw and what I read and saw, I had no in, intention of commenting or, or commenting, expanding on my comments or taking a look at EOS. However, I thought about it uh, and I thought to myself, Toss, that's not fair. So I downloaded the beta just to take a look at it. It seems okay for a beta. It's not for me, but that's beside the point. I'm not, I think I made a point of saying... I think I uploaded it as EOS personal thoughts or something like that. But I said, does, right, Spatchy, there's nothing wrong with asking your help, asking for help. Sometimes the problem lies in how you ask yes. for help. Right. So I thought the issue here was not so much is uh, them asking for help. Perhaps the issue here might have been an issue of can you forgive them for that little misstep in words? And I did. Uh, look, well, last year had a minor, minor, minor financial. Let me like emergency here with my son because his his mom wasn't working almost a year and he needed this. Uh, anyway, to, to make a long story short, I asked for a little help, uh, and the community came through with with uh, some donations here, and, and I was able to pick up a badly needed refurbished PC and a used laptop to to do full install tests of Linux distros. Now, I didn't say, if you guys don't donate your allocators, I didn't say that, of course, you know, but I just, look, if you guys can help, great. If not, I will continue. The community came through just like people come through for the cup of Linux.com. So the bottom line is, if you truly need help, we're human, ask for it. The, the thing is, how do you ask for it? How EOS, how the team at EOS ask for help was not the best way to ask let's be honest and it turned a lot of people off yep. but 
I understand they they need help. We all know the time and money involved into creating a quality product or a potential quality product, not just operating system, but our respective channels. It takes time and money. Uh, so them asking for help, I'm cool with that. Just be careful next time how you phrase the word. So in conclusion, it was for me, it was more a matter of can they be forgiven? Absolutely. We all we all suffer from foot and mouth disease sooner or, or later. And that's how I see it. You know, uh, and just a just a piece of suggestion here. You know, one great way they could have probably raised a lot of money for their project is probably just starting a fund, you know, a crowdfunding campaign. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I think that would have been a perfect way uh, for them to handle that. What you got, Toss? I I I I, I can feel okay. some nonsense tingling in the air. Yes. Well you uh -oh. may have heard you may have heard about the uh brouhaha about something called superfish. Did you Did hear you? it? I'm getting nervous. <laughs> okay. You should. Well, I guess we call it super fishy with with dynamite right now. But apparently, Lenovo Lenovo computers, which I I I bought ThinkPads in the past, although officially in the past it was IBM. But anyway, I bought. In fact, my computer before this was a Lenovo, and it worked fine. A little slow, but it worked. I guess since 2014, uh, apparently they had bundled software by default in their operating system and if you didn't pay attention when you booted up the system and signed in it installed this superfish bundled software battery and apparently there were some security issues with the bundled software with something called superfish it wasn't just adware it went beyond that to the point where it could pose a security risk now here here's the thing I was going to make fun of this and maybe pass this on to you. Well, of course, I did make fun of it. I said Lenovo stands for leave now or very often. But, you know, no. But, uh, <laughs> Spatry, let's try. Toss, <laughs> that's evil. Let's try. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to do redeem I get myself. Cake? Let's, what, let's... Cake? what does this fish program do anyway? It's it's a company, uh, advertising company, I'm assuming, that uh, this is bundled adware i guess okay, so, them. so 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 it's yeah. malware that comes bundled with the machine so i can sell it cheaper well i would not have called it malware except for the fact if there was a security flaw in it, then it's it's flat out not all adware is necessarily come on malware. anything that's going to give you unsoliciting advertising is malware get over it fine Gee, look <laughs> at, but okay but here here's a, here's the thing i was going to roast this company but i thought let, let's try a quick experiment let's reverse this i will try and defend lenovo and you tell me if i if this is source stable or, or stable here we go here we or go stable <laughs> okay goodbye here here we go first of all, all right. folks you know, we, we talked about hostile linux last week okay <laughs> here up, we go I, I am a rep for <laughs> lenovo here we go listen you stupid buyers first of all you had the option if you would care to read if you know how to read you would have the option to opt out of this but no you just go ahead and hit click yes accept accept without even reading number two you could uninstall this if you didn't like it, but no, you decided to, number one, not to read. Number two, you decided to be lazy and not even look for a solution. So it's all your fault. But wait, 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 I'm not done. On our website, me pretending to be, you know, Felino, you there is an easy fix to uninstall this and you can even download a patch if you so choose to. So all of you guys who complained about this, nah. Okay, well, that's my shtick. Um you know what? I I am leaning on the border of stable or horse stable because you know what? I, I well that sounds like something Microsoft would do, although they they'd sugarcoat it a little bit. But um, you know what? That's that's probably true, isn't it? Yeah, I may mean, mean look, I try to look at it from both sides, but apparently, uh, from what I saw, I don't have a newer machine from then. Like I said, I've 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 loved their products in the past; they work. But I believe there is an option to not select to install this. But of course, most of us just yeah 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 read it and go. Well, here's a good lesson for all of us: <laughs> read first, just to be even with Linux. Read first, just to be sure, right? 
Yep, you always want to uh, read the dialogues and that sort of thing because it's it's funny, you know, before I uh, quit using yeah. Windows. Because, I mean, I downloaded stuff like C Cleaner and this cleaner and, yeah. you know, that program. And the thing is, they, they have that one little slide that, that wants to install this toolbar. Yes. And so by the time you install all this free ball, all this freeware, and somebody shared a screenshot of this uh a few months ago, showing the uh, Windows browser with so many uh, toolbars yes. that you couldn't even see the web page. Well, that's true. So here, here, here. <laughs> I rest my case. And yes, to all to Absolutely. all the people so, out there who have a machine, though this is this is for. I I just picked this up today. There is, I believe, an update to all this. I think they even apologize for all this. There is a patch to have it uninstalled, and your machine should be fine. So, again, maybe this is another matter of we forgive you. For fifty bucks, fish. What you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still laughing. Fifty dollars. Sorry, I can't help that, it. it that reminds was... me of those days, you know, when, when people would go through it. And they're installing a program. They don't untick these little things, you know, about install this toolbar, that toolbar, this toolbar. And next thing you know, you got five, or six toolbars. And you're like, where'd it come from? You know. <laughs> okay, I have a game segment here. Odd World. I don't know if everybody remembers back in 97, oh, yes. Days Odyssey. Okay. Well, there's a number two, new and tasty, to be released February 25th on Steam and GOG.com. New and Yay. Tasty is a side-scrolling game based on the original game, Odd World, Abe's Odyssey, of course, that was released back in 1997. The game has been rewritten from scratch and comes with new modern graphics, enhanced audio, and revamped gameplay. For all you gamers out there, February 25th is your target time for this game. Cool. You know, that was a fun little game. You know, I might have to take a look at that. Toss, I got some nonsense news for you. And this Here is it comes, folks. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, <laughs> woman unknowingly drives pounds a pot around in van for several years. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? And this, yeah, uh, this lady in New Mexico, uh, she wasn't ruling doobies down by the river, but uh, this lady and her family were using their gently used 1990 Chevy van to roll around town when they discovered a stowaway that had been bumping a ride with them for about the last 15 years. 13 and a half pounds of Mary Juwadi packaged for transport and it's not that uh, anyone riding around uh you know uh noticed the smell of this or anything like that uh but what had happened was they had a problem you know the lady had a problem with uh her her car door she couldn't get the door to lock and unlock so she had uh one of her friends come over to take apart the door and have a look at it and they found all of this Maui Waui wrapped up in uh, foil and, uh, you know, uh, you know, cellophane wrapping and that sort of thing. And it had been in there for years. Now, get this. OK, this this woman was driving her kids around town and everything and even crossed the border, went through customs 10 times and they never found it in there and they were speculating that because it was packaged so well and the age of this uh chronic pot <laughs> uh didn't have an odor and that sort of thing so at any rate uh you know the law enforcement officials claimed the stash was most likely placed there by the van's uh, previous owner and uh, forgotten about uh 5 says the van's secret stash probably wasn't detectable by drug sniffing dogs and border agents due to the fact that it was uh, aged. So um, if you are in the market for purchasing a used vehicle, uh, you better make sure you give it a proper nasal appraisal before you drive it off the lot because she did buy this at a used car lot of all places. I'm sorry, oh, no. there's so much smoke nasal. in here. <laughs> hey, Toss, you gotta give it a nasal appraisal, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, don't don't bogart that thing, will ya? Oh no, man! This one smells like uh, Michiquan, man, Michiquan. <laughs> Toss, <laughs> what you got? I have nothing else to say on that note. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I've got I've got another one for you, and um, this is great for all of you texters out there. I was reading Slashdot this morning, and uh, 
I couldn't believe it when I read this one. An anonymous uh, uh, reader writes, the phenomenon of distracted walking, pedestrians who walk while using smartphones has raised civic attention in the last few years with Utah issuing fines and cities in China creating dedicated smartphone lanes for walkers who need to keep up with the WhatsApp on the move. This article argues that smartphone users have become so accustomed to other people getting out of their way that they will no longer negotiate for sidewalk space, even when not using their phones. And I did see a little uh, snippet, uh, a picture uh, from China, and they literally had two walking lanes, one showing a cell phone with a circle and line through it, and another one uh, for uh, walking while texting. Download the walking app that says, hey, stupid, look where you're walking. Put the phone down. Problem solved. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, the thing is, you know, uh, we, <laughs> I see it all the time. Every time I'm driving, people are distracted with their cell phones and that sort of thing. And there are states that have laws, you know, in the cars and that sort of thing. But, yeah, distracted walking. Yeah. Yeah, that, you know, people can get killed from that, too. So, yeah. No, well, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a serious thing. Seriously, folks, be careful with your phones. Obviously, I usually, well, sometimes I'll say, like, I'll end my, my, my talks. Please don't text and drive. But that, but that should be common sense. Same thing with walking in your phone. Look where you go, and especially crossing the street. Come on. Yeah, well, don't eat and drive either. You know, distracted driving of any kind is not a good thing. So, yeah. On that note, I think <laughs> we've said all we had to say. <laughs> and definitely uh, don't be smoking. All right. And that was Fishman Loves Linux Total OS today. And uh, yours truly with another fabulous Sunday Night News and Nonsense report. We'll be back ne same time next week, uh, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, UTC negative 5, right here at the cupoflinux.com Mumble server. We hope to see you all next week. And uh, we're not going to have a zoo crew uh, next week, but um, we may have one the following week. So uh, add me on G+. I'll keep you up to date, let you know when we're having our next zoo crew podcast. Boy, it's, I'm so glad we got these podcasts back again. Hey, Toss. Yeah, it's been a while. They are a lot of fun. We need to get uh, somebody missing. One of our friends from Australia, IG, needs to join in. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to have him back uh, again, and I hope he's doing well and that sort of thing. Thank you, everybody that's in the listening room. We've got a nice crowd in here tonight uh, listening in, so thank you all of you for joining us. And uh, now we'll uh, jump into the uh, lounge for post-show discussion. Thank you all again. Goodbye. Ciao. Later. Later.